The goal of the Atmel software framework is to enable you as a design engineer to spend most of your design time focusing on your unique application. Let us take a brief look at the structure of ASF. The ASF consists of a number of software layers, services, components, drivers, and boards. In other words, it's everything between the very top layer that is your application code and your hardware design. But what does services, components, drivers, and boards mean? The board in this context is the specific hardware pin configuration associated with a given PCB. Drivers are often peripheral drivers, such as SPI, USART, USB, or Ethernet. These are the low-level drivers that configure the peripheral at a register level. Components are often drivers for specific components on Atmel development boards. For example, a driver for an LCD controller, which would include routines for the low-level initialization of the LCD. Component drivers for memory such as SD cards and data flash are also available. Services are high-level software services, such as graphics libraries or Q-Touch libraries for adding capacitive touch buttons, sliders, and wheels to your project. Communication stacks such as Zigbee, Bluetooth, Ethernet, and Wi-Fi. Atmel Studio 6 and the Atmel Software Framework, or ASF, facilitates a top-down software design process. In the context of the layers of ASF, this means that when you add services to your application, the dependent components and drivers will be added to your project automatically. For example, if we add a USB device CDC service, the ASF wizard will automatically add the low-level USB driver to your project. Every time you add a service or driver to the project, all the functions in those services or drivers are defined. But they're still not used for anything until you decide to call them. To find out how to use them, you need to search the project database for the example implementation that is closest to your requirements. Sections of example code can then be copied into our application. An example is shown a bit later in the video. The functions called in the example code may need to be modified. For example, different parameters from those used in the example may need to be used. Various strategies can be used to find the alternative valid values for these function parameters. These include using the intelligent editor, using the ASF documentation, and, as a last resort, using the datasheet. Naturally, the datasheet is still a reference, but it is no longer the primary programming reference. ASF designers should be able to implement a basic proof of concept of their application without having to refer to the datasheet. Certain services or drivers have associated configuration files. Example projects can again be consulted to find configuration settings close to those of your application. That is a short overview of the ASF design process. We will now run through this process a second time, giving examples for each step. Let's open a user application template for the XMega A3BU Explained. In order to use the ASF wizard to add drivers, components, or services to your project, you need to start with a user application template. This ASF design starting point involves a basic hardware configuration. Essentially, the user application template is our ASF board layer, which gives names to and configures each microcontroller pin. We open a new project, which is a user application template for the XMega A3BU Explained. Our user application template opens in editing mode. We are now able to add services, components, and drivers to our project using the ASF wizard. As an example, let's add the system clock control service to our user application template. This is a useful module since most Atmel software framework projects will use the system clock control service to configure main and peripheral clocks. Find sysclock by typing clock in the search bar.
then click Add to Selection. Once SysClock is added, we can see it under Selected Modules. The description of SysClock reads, Driver for Clock Control, SysClock, provides functions for accessing, configuring, enabling, and disabling clocks. Note that the Clock Control service is classified as Common API. Common APIs are independent of which Atmel microcontroller they run on. In a project which uses only common API, both services and application layers will be identical, whether running on Xmega, UC3, or Cortex-M micros. Actually, in another video, we're going to look at the process of moving a common API example from Xmega to Cortex-M. Now you can explore the file structure of the project in the Solution Explorer. SysClock is a common service, so it has been added in the ASF Common Services Clock Directory. Also, note that in the config folder we now have a file called confclock.h. We can now use the documentation built into ASF to find out how to use the module that we just added. To find this, we go to the ASF Explorer, expanding the system clock control module that we are working with then click on the API documentation entry. The documentation opens within Studio, and we are able to open a quick start guide. Studio gives us the possibility of conveniently positioning this window alongside our code. We see that step one in the workflow of using the System Clock Control module is to make a call to SysClock init. Let's go back to the ASF design process to see what the next step should be. We need to set up the configuration of the module we have just added. We find confclock.h in the config folder. In confclock.h, we can see defines of all the valid Xmega clock sources. In some cases, configuration of the config files will be self-explanatory. In other cases, you will need to find a relevant example project to see how to set them up. In this case, we can change the clock source from the 2 MHz RC oscillator to the 32 MHz RC oscillator simply by commenting out and uncommenting the relevant lines, respectively. OK. We've now added one driver to our project and configured it. Our process now cycles as we add a second driver to our project, namely the ADC. Our first step is to look for a relevant example. We can use the New Example Project Wizard to easily find Xmega ADC related projects. But in this case, we're not going to create the project we just want to view its documentation. From the new project wizard, we can directly open the relevant documentation of the example. Click on ADC Example 1, Xmega A1 Explained, then click on the View Help tab to open the project help. ADC Example.c, click Main.c, can see main source code. Here is the section of code required to set up the ADC module. Essential to the ASF design process is modifying sections of codes from example projects. Many of the ASF example projects show the basic essential elements required to use a specific service or driver, so often main.c files are quite short and easy to understand. This simplifies finding the relevant pieces of example code to copy. We paste this section of code back into our main.c file. The code is not highlighted properly. It's all black. The functions are not recognized by Visual Assist, since we have not yet added the ADC driver to our project. Make sense? We use the ASF wizard to add the ADC driver to our project. Once we have done this, all the relevant ADC API are added to our project folder under Xmega Drivers ADC.
and are indexed and referenced by Visual Assist. Back in Maine, all code is now properly highlighted. When we use sections of code from example projects, we will have to change the API parameter values used in the example to those required by our application. Various strategies can be used to find alternative valid values. Often, functions use enumerated parameters, so the intelligent editor can be used to jump to the enum definition where other valid values can be selected. For example, to find alternate valid values for ADC sign off, click on the enumerated parameter, then use the keyboard shortcut Alt-G to go to its definition. Copy the value to the clipboard, in this case, ADC sign on, return to main and replace the relevant API parameter value. The second strategy is to use the ASF documentation. We open this as before from the ASF Explorer. Let's use the ASF documentation to find an alternative valid value for the ADC reference voltage, which is currently using the band gap reference. Our code relates to setting up the ADC module, so we click on that link. Here we find the enumerator ADC reference defined, and we can choose a value relevant to our application. We choose the VCC reference. Our third strategy relates to referencing the datasheet, but you shouldn't have to do that much during the initial stages of developing a project with ASF. To summarize the ASF design process that we have introduced, ASF facilitates a top-down software design process, so you are able to add services to your application and the dependent components and drivers are automatically added to your project. For each service or driver added to the project, you can search the project database for the example implementation closest to the application requirements. Sections of example code can then be copied into your application. The functions called in the example code may need to be modified, finding valid values using the intelligent editor and the ASF documentation. Certain services or drivers have associated configuration files. In this case, we may also need to find example projects to find configuration settings close to those of your application. Happy designing!